Do you remember when my dad was doing the um, Jobim album? Oh, yeah. And all of the, the A-team was in. And at the end of that session, we were doing something stupid. And the A-team left, and our little B-team came in. The wrecking crew came in and sat down. And we cut a number one record. And what most people don't realize, that was her dad's first number one record. And we just marched on in there and made our little hit. Daddy. Sorry. And quiet and then I think I'll wait until the evening gets late and I'm alone with you. I gotta sing a little louder then. You too, you sing a little louder too. I did uh, something stupid with Frank and Nancy Sinatra and, and the little lick that I played on the intro, I had already played that on another record of a song with a guy that wrote it. Carson Parks, and uh, Frank heard it and wanted that very lick on the intro. Billy Strange was the arranger, and the guitars were me and Glenn Campbell. And Billy had just written like El Paso-style guitar for the intro. So Glenn, of course, played something real nice, but it wasn't what was on the original record. And Frank said, no, that's not it, that's not it. Let's try it. So Glenn tried something else, and Frank wasn't real happy with it because it didn't sound like what he heard, you know. So finally, after a while, I said, Glenn, I don't want to be pushy or anything, but that's me on the original record. I know exactly what he wants. He said, well, then you play it, man. Switch parts real fast, and I play it. Do you want to hear the, the guitars just to make sure everything's cool? One real fast start. All right, let her eight. That did it. Right, Pretty sound, yeah. That's the whole trick of the record. I know I stand in line until you think you have the time to spend an evening Chuck Berghofer, who was the star, you know, that bass line became infamous. As a matter of fact, it's probably simple as it sounds, it's probably one of the hardest things a bass player ever has to do. Nobody can do it. They never do it correctly, you know, or they make an attempt at it. The engineer came out and said, gee, I love the sound of your bass. He says, I'm going to give your name to my friend. It turned out to be Jim Bowen. And I, I wound up doing some dates for Jim Bowen. About the third date I did was Boots Are Made For Walking. And that put me on the map. I went from doing two dates in my life to doing three a day. Yeah, if I wasn't available that day, uh, I'd probably be selling insurance somewhere. That chunk, a chunk, a chunk, that rhythm, chunky sound that, that was so, Lee used to call it dumb. He wanted that dumb sound. It really made, made the records, and it's very hard to capture, especially live. And that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. Lee didn't want me to do the song. I kept saying, I want to do that boots thing, that one about the boots. And he said, nah, it's not a girl's song. I said, well, it's certainly not a guy's song. He used to sing it live in his performances. And uh, I said, it's wrong for a man to sing it. It's harsh and abusive. But it's perfect for a little girl to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Start walking. The feeling of a live session was, was unlike anything else because you'd hear it back instantly and there it was and it was either magic or it wasn't magic. And I never will forget when I drove thing. to Las Vegas on the marquee it says Nancy Sinatra with Hal Blaine and drums. This big marquee all oh. over the thing at Caesars Palace. Oh. Now he's making like uh, $2,500 a week. Now Irv Kotler's work with Frank, the father, he's making seven fifty a week. <laughs> And I said, said life was fair. Oh, my God, in hell. And then all of a sudden, here's this hell blade. I just laughed, hell blade, all over the season. What a Great. gig. You got to get it when you can. Oh, Lord, it hurts to be living with a dream of a drummer man.